For the fourth Sunday in Advent, we're processing back in time to the Middle Ages. Welcome to Songs of Praise, where tonight I'm in the Somerset Village, where instead of electricity, candles light the high street, as thousands of visitors come to experience Dunster by candlelight. I hear how the Dunster carolers are inspiring the younger generation to carry on this age-old tradition. Singer Katie Mellower explains how her Eastern European roots have inspired her music. Take Carol of the Bells. The original is in Ukraine. And I'm helping hand out Christmas presents with hundreds of Santas on motorbikes. For our singing tonight, we have some seasonal favourites, including Oh Holy Night. We have the latest Christmas song from Russell Watson, plus some great carols that you can join in with. So let's start with the first Noel from Romsey Abbey. Around 10,000 people have converged on this usually quiet Somerset village to experience Dunster by candlelight. And I tell you what, you can see why. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> This year is the 30th anniversary of the festival, which celebrates the medieval origins of the village. There's been a castle here since the 11th century, and it's one of the best examples of a settlement from the Middle Ages. But back then, not all was as harmonious as it is today. 
as I found out earlier on when I popped into Dunster's medieval church. Hello, Caroline. David, hello. Welcome to St George's. Oh, it's lovely to be here. This is an amazing place, and particularly this beautiful partition. What exactly is it? This is a rood screen. Uh -huh. It was put up many hundreds of years ago by the monks who were established here in the 12th century. They were Benedictines. So the people in the town resented the fact there were a few monks who were rich and living on them and used to do practical jokes to annoy them. They tied the clappers of the bells together. They came in and caused trouble. And eventually it got so bad that the bishop decided he needed to do something formally about it. So he came down in all his pomp and glory and decided to divide the church. And this is the division. So the monks were on one side and the parishioners were on the other. And never the twain shall meet. Lovely to see all the candles. What do the candles mean to you? Oh, candles are very important. They're a focus for prayer. And we use it in all sorts of ways to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world and we are called to be lights on a hilltop and show that we can be hopeful. And that's helped by the meaning of Christmas and John's Gospel, a light coming into the world, which is Jesus. To go out and to make people understand what Christians can do and can be. Round the corner from the church is the primary school where they're busy preparing for the procession. Hi guys. How you doing? Oh, this looks great. This is all for later, yeah? Yeah. Fantastic. What do you, what do you think of the procession? I like seeing all the lanterns and lights and the dark sky. It always looks amazing. Yeah? It feels like I'm in something really important. At Christmas, what do you learn in school about Jesus? In the nativity play, we found out that he was known as the Good Shepherd and they were sent to earth to look after everyone. We learn that he was born in a stable in Bethlehem and we learn that he was a very special boy and that he was God's son. Oh, thank you. So we've got our lanterns. Are we ready for the procession? Yeah! And here we are to light up Dunster. Our next hymn is dedicated to Pope Francis, who celebrates his 80th birthday this weekend. It's written by the Catholic composer Bernadette Farrell and is appropriately called Christ Be Our Light. Christ be our light. 